Hello everyone, I'm back with another Reddit Addicts episode. If you find my videos entertaining, please kindly subscribe and like them. Thanks to everyone for your suggestions and kind notes. Now, let's get started with today's exciting stories. I, 37M, found out my wife, 33F, has been cheating. Confronting her about it has opened up other horrible truths. I've been with my wife for 16 years. Married for almost 14. We have two daughters. One is mine biologically. The other is mine in every other way. I love them all with all of my being. A few weeks ago, I took my wife to get her eyebrows microbladed, a source of great insecurity for her. During which I hoped to enjoy a night of dining and fun in the city just to enjoy each other's company on a rarely enjoyed date night. While she was enduring the procedure, she left her phone with me. After a bit, a notification popped up. It was my step daughter. Even though I'm completely unaware on how to use Snapchat, I thought it would be fun to surprise her with a response from dad instead of mom. It took a few minutes, but I was able to fire off a goofy picture back to her. After sending, I somehow stumbled in her chat section. At first glance it was nothing. But then I noticed a name. A name I've always hated. We'll call him Dick. I hesitated at first, never wanting to be that type of guy who snoops through her phone, but curiosity got the best of me. I was floored by what I saw. Detailed conversations about a tryst they had recently the details of which I will mostly keep silent. But let's just state that it was about oral sex. I couldn't help but to continue reading. It was difficult for several reasons. The obvious betrayal set aside, as I've learned about Snapchat, portions will delete automatically. So the dates jumped wildly, and details were sparse from the past. What I did learn was that it had happened a few times over the past few months, including on my birthday as I slept upstairs. I work very early. I know at my age birthdays aren't as exciting or important. That's aging for you. But it stung a little extra for sure. In between the flirting and details were pictures, nothing too graphic, but certainly problematic, and probably the most hurtful was how she talked about me. Certainly not much positive, and at best only half true, and at worst just blatant lies or misleading statements. She got to a moment for a break in her procedure, so I put the phone down. Visibly shaken, she asked what was wrong. Not wanting to cause a scene in public, or involve the poor girl doing the procedure in our mess, I just told her I wasn't feeling well and wanted to get some fresh air. I spent the rest of the procedure, about two hours, walking downtown trying to figure out what steps to take next. After the procedure, I told her we'd have to put a hold on the other plans to both of our dismay. Intending to discuss things when we got back home, once we reached our car, I couldn't hold back. I told her everything I saw. I told her not to touch her phone because I wanted to talk to her about it point by point and didn't want her removing or deleting anything anywhere from her phone. We cried and screamed all the way home. Once home, we set the kids up, and we went to our room where I dove in head first. I had her unlock her phone and give it to me, which she eventually did, very reluctantly. That's where it got even harder. She admitted to the infidelity with Dick in the basement on multiple occasions. But as I dove deeper in the phone, I found out a couple of other issues. It turns out that while we were dating, before we were married, she had been with a friend in college that I always feared, but she had always denied. She insists, the same with Dick, that they did not have intercourse. Only oral, making out, etc. A contentious subject as we seem to disagree on the definition of sex. Hearing this, my mind ran away, and I began to ask about any and every situation where I feel she might have been able to cheat. Nothing too serious, except one. One night years ago after work, 
she didn't come home until almost 2 a.m. I remember asking where she had been. She told me she was out. Nothing more. Despite my worries, in my new relationship naivety, I let it go for the time being. But it always lingered in the back of my mind and burst out that night. As I asked, in between anger and hurt, she suddenly tightened up. She started crying, and I assumed that this was the one that would end our relationship. Instead, without going into detail in fairness to her, it was the story of her sexual assault that she had never told anyone. She cried. I cried. We held each other forever. I felt like the world's biggest asshole while simultaneously hurt and betrayed from the other stories of her actual infidelity outside of the assault. I assured her that the assault wasn't her fault, and that despite my feelings now that I would certainly never hold that against her. What piece of shit would? We stopped the fighting at that point as we were both worn out. Over the next few days, we tried to be cordial and mend fences where possible, the problem was that as is abundantly clear above, I'm not social media savvy. I don't use them terribly often, if ever. Well she is, and has quite a large following across several platforms. She has been using those platforms to create sympathy for herself. Not giving details, but using cryptic messages about how sad she is, how everything is ruined, how bad her depression currently is. Now our friends are sympathetic towards her without knowing any details, while I appear to be the unsympathetic husband who makes her miserable. I've seen comments about how I may be the problem. Now I know I'm not free from any blame here. I work a lot. Strange hours sometimes. I've had to move my disabled mother and brother in with our family to take care of them, which she has been truly helpful with. I'm also currently dealing with health issues of my own. And I can admit that because of these things, I've not been the most attentive husband for her emotionally or sexually. I have tried, but it's difficult sometimes as life gets in the way. But the fact is that I wanted to. I'm just not sure she does. And I don't feel that it justifies her infidelity. I'm at a loss here. It seems that every direction I look is the wrong one. I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose my girls. I don't want to walk away from her when she needs me, as her sexual assault revelation has taken a toll on her that no woman deserves. But I also don't want to sit back and be a sucker. To get belittled and betrayed, just to brush my shoulders of and say it's no big deal. I'm lost and have nobody else to turn to here. So I took the terrifying step that I'm completely uneducated on, and came here. Do I file for divorce, seeing as how this seems to be a troubling trend? Do I stay with my wife, despite the betrayal, and try to learn to be a better husband for her in her time of need? Should I tell my friends and family to save face and reveal the truth, or would that be considered as shaming her? Please help. I don't know what to do. TLDR, found out my wife cheated recently, and also long ago. Then found out she was sexually assaulted at a different time. Now I feel like I'm taking the blame for our relationship woes with our friends on social media. Edit 1, I've seen it pop up a few times. I was sort of expecting it. But her assault story is true. I'm not one to share much publicly but I am as sure as anyone can be that wasn't an eyeball witness. It happened. That explanation will have to suffice, and I will be ignoring comments suggesting otherwise. I admit that I'm the one who asked for advice, but her assault happened. That part is settled. Edit 2, I took pictures of the conversations they had, and that we've had. I'm compiling the evidence just in case, and to keep her honest. Edit 3, this one is on me. When stating that it was oral sex, I meant she was on the receiving end. She claims that and making out was it. The conversations I've saved also seem to support that. 
However, I'm not necessarily convinced that was all, but I have no proof otherwise. Edit 4, alright. I'm going to take a break until tomorrow. This is all a little overwhelming. I appreciate all of the comments and advice. Even the ones condemning me to a life of cuckoldry. I knew everyone would have different and strong opinions. That's what I wanted to hear. I know my marriage is likely over. It's just hard to so casually throw away something you've spent half of your life building. I'll post an update if anything happens. We hope you enjoyed this story. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. And before you go, please be sure to subscribe for more.